in one of my recent tracking experiments that I did, I had a group of people, I say I started with about 10, but some people dropped off for family issues and stuff like that, but I ended up with like six or seven people in each group, and I was a tracking versus non-tracking group. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, the non-tracking group ended up losing on average about 1.5 pounds more per week. It was about one to one and a half pounds more. Um, but I think that's just because they didn't have to stress over tracking. Uh, in a recent video that Dr. Barry did, he was talking about um, tracking uh, for new people. And this is what I've said a lot. And it's so refreshing to hear somebody like Dr. Barry, a professional, like put that out. So now I have something to reference to. And... Basically, as a new person, you've you've obviously had an issue with food to get into the position that you're, that you're in. More than likely, there is a per percentage of people that have got to the weight that they're that they're at. If you're if you're chasing weight loss, um, medical conditions, and such like that, you don't have the experience of assimilating the, the macronutrients that are in food, and when you don't have that kind of experience, unless you start tracking and doing the same thing over and over again um, and, and assimilating what's in that food, like, you know, an egg is 70 calories and it's got, you know, for instance, maybe 11 grams of protein and let's just say 9 grams of fat. You know, I'm just throwing that out there. It's not, ex I know there are typically about 70 calories, but I don't know what the makeup inside is now. I just know what I can and can eat. Um... And I go through periods of tracking just to make sure that I'm on track and that I haven't forgotten anything and that I'm doing things correctly. And usually I'm right on point. Um, but he also said the same thing. As a new person, uh, not understanding exactly what's in food, um, that's why we have this Google machine. You know, the apps are not always accurate when they give you the information. And uh, the manufacturers most of the time will post the stuff per ounce. But he also said be careful because... They don't have to tell you what one whole like cookie is. They can, um, they can break it down however they want. They don't have to tell you the exact amount that's in it. If it's less than one gram of something, they may even say zero because they're not regulated in that aspect. So as a new person, for at least the first four to eight weeks, you want to track your food. You want to assimilate what nutrients is in that food. You want to figure out how much protein, carbs... Uh, fat, potassium, sodium, and stuff's in that food to make sure you know exactly what you're putting in your body. And I challenge you to look at the labels for everything. And if something doesn't look right, if it looks like a sugar, if it has a name like a sugar, um, anything with a tall at the end of it, or a tros at the end of it, um, or a los at the end of it, look it up and figure out what that is. And I was really happy to see Dr. Barry... Uh, make that video talking about things that can be tricky and especially as somebody new track for a while to get yourself used to what you're tracking what kinds of food you can have give yourself a menu of variety there's plenty of it learn how to shop on a budget and things like that and once you've done it for a while and you've built up that knowledge that that memory bank of what's oh i already know what's in that food i don't even need to write it down he even said himself, it's, it took him a long time to figure out. And now he's a doctor and he works with people. And nutrition is a big part of his practice and stuff. And he can look at things and he already knows what one's serving and about how much is. So that's why he can get by without tracking. So be very careful if you're new and you're starting keto and you're thinking, well, I'm just going to go track. I'm not going to track like other people. And I'm not going to do this because I see other people not doing that. As a new person, what you want to do is you want to assimilate the food and the nutrients that are in it before you actually start getting to the point where you don't track your food. And if you do that, you're going to set yourself up better for success before you go through that non-tracking journey. Just go ahead and do the work in the beginning. Do the, do the research. Uh, find out for yourself so you can help other people as well. And then uh, and go from there. So this is my advice for new people. You want to start out, you want to start out tracking for about the first four to eight weeks before you decide that uh, you're good enough to not track. And then some people continue to do that because you had an addiction to food for so long it holds you accountable and you just feel like that's the best thing for you. 
Um, unfortunately, a lot of the trackers are not accurate because they, re they require a lot of user input. I've been on there and I've put food in before and I know that's not the right amount. That's not the right caloric. That's not the right fat percentage. And I go actually look it up by the manufacturer. I'll Google it. And I found more accurate information on, I think it's called fatsecret.com. Um, as what I found good information on. I've been on MyFitnessPal plenty of times and found completely way, way, way like information that's not even close to being correct. And if you guys don't know how to set up your macros on MyFitnessPal, um, there's, if you pay for it, it makes, it opens a lot more options up to you. But under your account settings, you can actually go to the drop down menus. And most people are not, they go into MyFitnessPal and they start setting stuff up and they can't get things correct. That It's not looking right. Go ahead and set it up just like you normally would, just like you're just cracking normal food. Don't worry about percentages. Get everything set up and then go into your account settings. I think it's the far right tab on the bottom of the screen if I remember correctly. I did a Facebook video on this to show people, but I've never done a YouTube video. And on the right side, you can click on your account settings. And in your account settings, you can it'll actually ask you in a drop-down box. You might have to go in one box to get into another, and it'll say... What fat percent do you want? If you want 75%, you want, you know, 70%. What protein percent do you want? Do you want 15%, you know, or do you want 20%? And then it'll it'll have your drop-down menu for your carbs next to it. And then you can actually save it. And then when you go back to your main screen, everything would have switched and updated for you in that aspect. So for those of you that have been asking me to help you, unfortunately, I haven't been able to sit down in front of the computer and actually pull up, you know, the the response from my YouTube creator so I can actually use my phone to walk you through it and I'll eventually get to that. But that's just a basic breakdown on new people, uh, a tracker, and that you should track in the beginning until you become very familiar with the food that you're putting in your mouth. And once you do that, that will better help, that will better help you uh, stay accountable for what you're eating. And uh, even a lot of people that have been doing this for a long time, they continue to track because that's just how they feel the best you know that the, the peace of mind and stuff that they have and even though they know what's in the food it just keeps them accountable for what they're doing so you pick and choose uh, um, I'm a tracker and a non-tracker I go through periods where I do both and I'm very successful at it so if you guys have any questions leave it in the comments below um, if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and I appreciate your uh, your time guys thanks have a blessed day keto on